Build the Big Podcast. David Hooper here. I posted an image on the Big Podcast Instagram account. It's a merch photo, some t-shirts that I've got for sale with the Big Podcast logo, some other podcasting related stuff. And I mentioned a story about a band I knew. You wouldn't know them, but they sold $1 million worth of shirts. That's the story. It's a relatively unknown band who sold a million dollars worth of shirts. Kyle from Gagglepod Studios commented, he said, you should do a podcast on this. Here it is. More on that $1 million worth of shirts in a second. First, I want to tell you another merch story. Actually, a couple of them. A few years ago, I was in a yoga class and there's a lady in a Run DMC shirt. And I had worked for Run DMC on their final album, an album called Crown Royale. I was doing promo. I didn't produce it or write on it or anything. But anyway, doing the promo for Crown Royale for Run DMC. And I say to this lady, I said, nice shirt. I did some work for those guys. And she says this, she says, uh, I'm actually a Jay-Z fan. Like everything she said back to me was a question. <laughs> I want you to think about that. This woman is wearing a shirt of musicians that she didn't know the music of. I'm pretty confident I could have said, what's your favorite Run DMC song? She'd be like, uh, I don't know. I've never heard them. But she knew the logo. And she was choosing to wear that logo more than the logo of the act that she liked better, Jay-Z. Here's another quick story, sort of related. As you know, my wife is a photographer. About a year ago, she did a shoot with a male model. I was there kind of uh, as a distraction. (laughs) The permits hadn't been pulled. It was one of those things where you're on private property and they could run you off anyway. So I was there to, I guess, give him a little bit more time to move on, maybe is the way to talk about it. Anyway, this dude, he's wearing a Kiss shirt. It's a young black guy, maybe 15 or 16. And I thought that was interesting because Kiss, if you know the story of Kiss, they started, I want to say it was 1972. I remember seeing Kiss when I was 15, yeah, I was 15 years old. So it was 1987. I'm 47 now. So 32 years later, and I said something similar to him that I said to the girl. I said, hey, you're a Kiss fan. And his answer was very similar to hers. No. He said it wasn't a question. It was a definitive no. And then I asked him, I said, have you ever heard Kiss? (laughs) And he said, no. Big lesson number one. Why people buy our stuff isn't always because of what we do. It's usually because of who we are or what we've created. And that creation also not related to what we do. You could argue that KISS are musicians. You could argue that KISS is known for live performance. Something to do with music, right? But when it comes to KISS, there's also a brand. There's a sense of belonging. They call it the KISS army. There's also a feeling you get because KISS shirts are cool. They've got a cool logo, cool imagery. They're wearing makeup again, so they look like superheroes. And I mentioned this on the Big Podcast Instagram, which is Big Podcast One. That's the username, by the way. And also I'm mentioning it here because we've got that same opportunity with our businesses. We've got a brand. We've got a sense of belonging, a community around us. We've got a feeling that people have when people interact with us. And if you think about the biggest brands in the world, think about Apple, Think about a car company, Tesla, for example. There's a feeling when you interact with these brands. That is how merchandise is sold. A few months ago, a guy from CNBC interviewed me about the merch business, specifically about a band named Slayer. And when the article came out, attached to it was a picture of Kylie Jenner in a Slayer shirt. Do you think Kylie Jenner knows Slayer's music? Do you think all the people who went out and bought Slayer shirts because of seeing Kylie Jenner in a Slayer shirt know Slayer's music? Absolutely not. Yet they are making tons of money off their merchandise. They are making more money off their merchandise right now than they are music. And they're not the only ones. Ween, The Cramps, Sex Pistols, Descendants, ACDC, Ramones, Fish, Grateful Dead, Def Leppard, Johnny Cash, Metallica, Velvet Underground, Black Flag, Wu-Tang Clan... 
Red Hot Chili Peppers, Misfits, Danzig, all those kids in Misfits and Danzig shirts. Go ask them that question. What's your favorite song? Uh, I'm a Jay-Z fan. Nothing wrong with Jay-Z. Nothing wrong with not knowing the music. I'm cool with it. Somebody wants to wear a big podcast t-shirt, go for it. You're helping me out. I will take it. Let's talk about big lesson number two, the kind of money you can make. I mentioned a little known band. They sold $1 million worth of t-shirts. They're what I would call a college band. They weren't even national. They toured the Southeast during the late 80s, early 90s. And very few people outside of colleges knew that they even existed. If you got outside of the Southeast, even in the colleges, few people knew about them. Let's look at that business model. You can sell a record or a CD or a cassette or a download, whatever you want to call it. You can sell music once. And people can copy that music. These days, people can stream that music. Get a subscription to Spotify, free or paid. You can look these guys up. They are there. But t-shirts, you can't just stream those. You got to purchase them. T-shirts are easy to create. They have a huge markup. You can get a good shirt done for three to five bucks. You can sell it for 20, four to six times markup. And you can make a ton of them. That's what these guys did. They had shirts for different tours, the spring tour, the fall tour, the summer tour, the back to school tour. They had shirts for specific shows. They had shirts for specific shows, something fans could take away to prove that they were there. They had shirts for specific schools where they played. And it wasn't uncommon for somebody who was really into this band to have more than one shirt by them. To take it back to Kiss, those folks are crazy. I know guys with dozens of Kiss shirts. Just sit there, collector's items. If you want to see something interesting, go to eBay, go to Amazon and search for Kiss t-shirt. Tons of stuff comes up. How do you make that happen? How do you do it for your brand, your podcast? whatever it is that you do. It's not about cool designs. It's about creating moments and shared experiences. One of the things that I talk about in my book, Big Podcast, is making people feel like they're part of something. If you can do that, you can sell shirts and you can sell other merchandise. A podcast example of this, call her daddy. Look it up and look up the merch that they have available. There's a lot of it. And if you know the history behind this podcast, that is one of the reasons this podcast is so valuable. Not only are people listening to the podcast and people advertising on the podcast, they've got a series of, I guess we'll call it clothing, t-shirts, caps, accessories with the funny sayings, with the logo, the name of the show. Political example of this, Trump, love him or hate him. This guy's got a merchandise machine behind him. I don't think he's getting royalties on it. Probably royalty to his ego. (laughs) If you want the behind the scenes of this, I actually did an episode. If you go to redpodcast.com, look for episode 225. I went to a Trump rally and I interviewed or tried to interview the merch guys. You get the behind the scenes of that. I was going up to these guys and they wouldn't talk to me. And finally, I found a guy who would talk to me and I secretly recorded it. One of the funny things about that interview is these guys selling merch, they were agnostic. They were there because they could sell merch. And this guy in particular, he was doing all the Bernie Sanders rallies. He was going to the Trump events. He was going wherever he could make money. And the reason he was able to make that money was because people had that feeling when they were at a Trump rally. They felt like they were a part of something. They had the same beliefs of people who were there with them And they wanted to let that be known. So this guy's got caps, he's got t-shirts, he's got flags. Whatever he could put Trump on, he was going to print it up. He was going to go to the rally where the people were and he was going to sell it at an extremely high markup. When I talk about shirts being three to five dollars, those are quality shirts. You can get shirts a lot cheaper and you can sell them for a lot more if you've got the right audience. And that's what this guy was doing. Again, for the behind the scenes of that, go to redpodcast.com. It's episode 225. I'll finish out giving you a few more examples from the music industry. I've already mentioned them here. Ween, The Cramps, Sex Pistols, Metallica, Misfits, Danzig, CBGBs, Paradise Garage. Those last two clubs, few people wearing those shirts have actually been to those clubs. 
They're no longer in existence. That's how powerful this is. It's a feeling, something that was there. It's not there anymore, yet you've retained that feeling. That's what it's going to take for you to do this. Making your people feel something when they see you, when they hear you talk, when they read your books, listen to your podcast, when they see other people who are also doing those things. If you can do that, you can sell merch and you can make a lot of money doing it. The book, as I mentioned, it's called Big Podcast. It's got more specifics on how to do this. You can also subscribe to this podcast. That's exactly what I talk about here. To do that, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. You'll see all the podcasts that I do right there. Subscribe to all of them. Subscribe to any of them. Red Podcast, Build a Big Podcast. I've got some podcast challenges. Everything is there for you at bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Let me leave you with one more thing. As far as getting started in merch and t-shirts, it is super easy now. This is actually what I mentioned on the Big Podcast Instagram account. And again, that one, Big Podcast 1, number one on Instagram. I set up a store at a company called T Public. It took me about 20 minutes. Everything is print on demand. There's no inventory, no monetary investment. If you've got logos, if you've got slogans, it's pretty easy to put that in the format that T Public needs. Turn it into a t-shirt, mobile phone cases, wall tapestries, water bottles, coffee cups, pillows. It's worth it. Why not? You've never heard me talk about the merch that I've got available. I don't think about it. I've got it there. If somebody wants it and they discover it, great. That's my attitude toward this. If you want to make it a real business, obviously that can be done too. These people that I've been talking about, these acts, these brands, They have made merch a real business. Want more from me? I'm here all the time. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Thank you so much for listening. Hit it. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. And I'll see you on the next episode.